Very few characters within Elden Ring are surrounded in as much mystery as Mikola, son of Radigan and Merica, an Empyrean cursed with eternal youth. He is undoubtedly one of the most fascinating characters within the story of Elden Ring. With the announcement of the Shadow of the Erdtree expansion, we know he will be playing an essential part in the Tarnish's journey throughout the Land of Shadows. It is well known by everyone in the Lands Between that Mikola was well liked and even loved by many. We know this through in-game text and dialogue of the Albanorix trying to find his Halic Tree, which was seen as a safe haven, rid of all influence from the Golden Order. Mikola is also extremely smart. Not only did he try and grow his own Erd Tree in the form of the Halic Tree, but he was also able to construct a needle that could rid anyone from the influence of an outer god. On top of that, he was able to strip himself of his own flesh, similar to Rani, yet still maintain his soul and consciousness. There are dozens, if not hundreds of questions we could speculate on prior to the release of the Shadow of the Erdtree expansion. But, one of the biggest, and the one I'm most curious about, is what is Mikola's great rune? We know that there are eight confirmed great runes in the base game of Elden Ring. Godric's, Rikard's, Radon's, Morgoth's, Moog's, Millennia's, and the two most mysterious confirmed great runes, Rani's and the Great Rune of the Unborn. We'll come back to these later. I'm leaving out the Phantom Great Rune only because of its unique property of being obtained from first using Moog's Great Rune and invading a host finger during online play. It cannot be used in a player's single player game. We can also assume that there are two more great runes that will be obtainable in the Shadow of the Erdtree expansion, Mikola's and Mesmer's. But I have a theory that one of these has been staring at us all along. As for Rani's great rune, we know essentially nothing. We know she did have one, but according to Gideon, she cast it aside. I believe an entirely separate video could be made on speculating what hers was, or if she destroyed it or hid it somewhere, but for today, I simply want to focus on Mikola. Now, although it isn't confirmed that Mikola has a great rune, we can definitely speculate he does simply off the fact that all of his siblings have one of their own. It would have been very foolish of him to not take advantage of the shattering and grab a great rune when all of his siblings took one, putting him at a direct disadvantage in terms of power, and we know Mikola is not a foolish person. We know that Mikola and Millennia are twins, similar to Morgoth and Moog. We also know that in order to activate the great runes of Morgoth and Moog, you must go to the same Divine Tower of East Atlas. This is different compared to siblings like Rikard and Radon, who aren't twins and have different divine towers to activate their great runes. Based on this information alone, we can infer that if Mikola were in the main game, and we defeated him, we would have had to go to the same isolated divine tower as Millennia. Now that this has all been laid out, I want to get to my theory. I believe the Great Rune of the Unborn is actually Mikola's Great Rune. Let me explain. We know Mikola is a smart person, but at the same time he is cursed with eternal youth. He is most likely not very strong or a fighter at all. That being said, knowing this, he knew that if he were to take a Great Rune, he would be an easy target for any other Shardbearer to kill him and take his Great Rune. Yes, they would have to defeat Millennia, the warrior who is never lost in battle, but like any smart person, they always take precautions. He knew that there was still a possibility that he could be killed. So what did he do? 
he isolated himself in his hallow tree in a cocoon to try and grow it into a full Erd tree. We know that the thorns of an Erd tree are impenetrable and can only be burned through the frenzied flame, or the giant's flame. So, if he were able to grow the hallow tree to its fullest potential, it would be nearly impossible for anyone to get to him. It is unclear whether he cocooned himself before or after Millennia left on her expedition to Kaled, but unfortunately, he was taken by Moog before the Halig tree could reach its fullest potential. Yet still, even after taking all these precautions, he had a backup plan. He would hide his great rune, or at least part of it, where no one would think of looking, in Renala's Amber Egg. The Academy of Raya Lucaria was not only sealed off from the rest of the lands between, making it impossible to enter without a glintstone key, but at this point in the game's story, everyone would have known Renala was in a decayed state of mind due to Radagon leaving her. There would be no reason for her to seek out a Great Rune. We know that Great Runes take some resemblance in terms of ability from their shard bearers. For example, Radon's Great Rune raises your HP, FP, and Stamina. This makes sense because he is a giant warrior and he probably has massive amounts of HP, FP, and Stamina. Similarly, his brother Rykard's Great Rune gives you HP for every enemy you defeat. This makes sense because Rykard, for every enemy he defeats, he gets stronger, absorbing their power into himself. Still not convinced? Okay. Godric's Great Rune raises all of your abilities slightly. This makes sense because he grafts other people's body parts onto himself, so he gets a little bit better at everything because he's taking body parts from a ton of different people. Lenya's Great Rune is Lifesteal. It makes sense because that's literally what she does in your fight with her. Moog's Great Rune gives the Blessing of Blood to Summoned Phantoms. This makes sense because he's the Lord of Blood. The only one that is kind of hard to make an argument for is Morgoth's, a great rune which just gives you a big HP boost. I'll chalk it up to From Software running out of time and couldn't come up with anything else. Finally, we have the great rune of the Umborn. This one is special in a lot of different ways compared to the other great runes. 1. It is the smallest great rune. 2. It's the only great rune that isn't named after anyone. 3. It is the only great rune not held by a demigod. 4. It is the only great rune you get by not killing someone. 5. It's the only great rune you don't have to activate at a tower. 6. It's the only great rune that doesn't fit in your great rune inventory slot. Now, many may say that this was simply made for gameplay purposes how they needed a respec element in the game and it made sense to make it into a great rune. I don't buy it. From Software intentionally made this great rune unique and different from the rest for a reason. The reason why is because it's part of Mikola's great rune. I believe that this is either half of or part of Mikola's great rune. The other half or parts we will be obtaining throughout the Land of Shadows. The Great Rune of the Unborn makes sense to be tied to Mikola, because while he is in his cocoon, he is unborn, and in order to use it to respec, you must have a larval tier. In the real world, larvae are encased in cocoons in order to grow. I believe this image here will either be the other half or one part of the full Great Rune. It makes sense that Mikola didn't put the full Great Rune inside the Amber Egg, because even on the off chance an enemy or someone like the Tarnished figures it out, they won't have the full Great Rune or its full power. So, a rough timeline could go something like this. The Shattering happens. The Demigods take their Great Runes. Millennia leaves to go fight Radon and tells Mikola to stay put. Spoiler, he doesn't. He breaks his Great Rune into smaller parts. He sneaks into Raya Lucaria, and he places part of his great rune in the Amber Egg. He goes back to the Halig Tree, and he cocoons. He discards his flesh and travels to the Land of Shadows with the other part of his great rune. Og steals his body. 
Millennia comes back and is now sad and waiting for Mikola's return. That's the TLDR of my theory of Mikola's Great Rune. Very curious to see what you guys think of this. I've spent a lot of time researching, reading wikis, watching YouTube videos, and playing the game to find any inconsistencies. And I really couldn't. So I hope I don't look stupid posting this and somebody right away goes, Bro forgot that John Eldon was the one who has the real Amber Egg and Rinalis is fake. Or something like that. Anyways, that's my theory. I hope you guys like it. If you do or don't, please leave a comment down below, and maybe I can make a follow-up video addressing some questions or concerns or inconsistencies with my theory. Please be sure to like and subscribe as well. Thank you, but until then, I will see you all next time.